Hey there, my gorgeous friends on the internet. If you love web animations, oh boy, oh boy, do I have a tool for you. I genuinely think that this tool is gonna change web animations forever. When it comes to web animations, we usually just stick to either CSS or JavaScript, right? Add a couple of keyframes in CSS, do a fade and fade out, boom, we're done with it. So how are more complex animations like this achieved? Well, they usually use After Effects with LUTI. So there's a plugin where you can export your animation from After Effects into a JSON file, and you can add that to your website. But that JSON file tends to be really big, usually like two megabytes or yeah, something like that. And it's a nightmare to work with. It's, have you worked with an Adobe product before? Exactly. So I'm gonna show you this new tool called Rive, and you're gonna see in just a couple of minutes, you'll be able to pick it up and apply it to your websites. I had the microphone really far away from my mouth. I apologize for that. Why is that? Why am I getting muted when I move it to my mouth? That makes no sense. Physics. Today's sponsor? Brilliant. How exciting. Let's get started with Rive. So we're going to make a new artboard here. Let's create a new file and I'm going to make this 1920 by 1080. Perfect. Let's create. And you're going to be amazed of how easy this actually is to like how the animation looks like. I think it's going to become one of your favorite tools very soon. All right, so let's make the line. So we can just go to the pen tool up here and go to the middle of the screen. And when it snaps, just click. There we go. And I'm going to add a couple of points here. So we're going to hit done editing. And there we go. We can't see it invisible. Well, we can't see it because uh, it currently only has a fill on it. So if you want to visualize that, what you'd have to do is open up this custom shape. And if you hit edit vertices on the top right corner here, we can just select them and move them up and about. And as you can see, there's the fill, but we don't need that. Um, so let's grab it, remove the fill, and I'm just going to add a stroke instead. So let's do something like two pixels here and we are going to select maybe like a cool purple color. So let me just grab one of these points. I'll move it up in a position and I'll add the curve smooth to it like that. And now we can use bones to adjust the strength of the movement of each of those vertices. So by selecting the path here and going to edit vertices, I'm going to hit the button B and just put a bone to each of these points. So one of them is here at the beginning. So click once and click again, and that's it. Now this gets combined here, so you can just keep clicking and clicking. But what we're going to do is hit V, which is going to be our select tool, and then B again, so we can put another point. So I'm again, I'm going to just put a bunch of points here to the main vertices. So one, two, again, it's the circ circle point that you want to look for. The rectangles are the like easing uh, handlers. So there we go, that's all the bones added. And now what we can do is just select all the vertices again. So drag out and here we're gonna bind the bones and select all the bones to bind. And now the cool part is I can just go to each vertice that I want and I can adjust the strength of the bone. So here, for example, if I grab the first vertice, I can assign 100% of the strength to this light yellow bone. And I'm just going to go through all of them and add the bones corresponding to the point. So in this case, like this point, for example, I also want to grab the handlers and attach it to this light blue bone. So let's grab all three of them, go here to that bone and put 100%. All right, so let's create our animation. We're going to hit tab. And as you can see, that pulls up an animation tab here for us. So I'm going to name this wave effect or wave. So now let's also extend the timeline because it's currently only one second. So let's change this to five. So I'll go here to the duration and then extend it all the way like that. Cool. So now we can just move to a position maybe like 30 milliseconds in and I can grab one of these points and move them up, for example. So there we go. I just created a random like movement up and down, up and down, some sometimes stronger here, sometimes stronger there. And then I'll just take all the keyframes and add a cubic base here to it just to give that smoothness. Nice. Next up, what I'm going to do is head over to shape and change it from solid to radial. And this is going to give us the ability to kind of hide the edges of that shape and not like fully show up. Uh, so I'll take this middle point and position it right in the center until it snaps. And this other point, let's bring it down here at the bottom and maybe we'll extend it up slightly like that, something like that. 
And then what we can do is grab the white point here, which is in the middle, and we can pick that red color that we like. And then for the black color here, I'm just gonna decrease it to zero. And now as you can see, that's gonna hide some of the shape of the mesh. Now what we can do is take this wave and duplicate it essentially and rename it to idle. And look at that, we have both of our animations set up so we can just toggle in between them. But you're like, Ed, this looks not so good. That's okay. This is where the magic is gonna come in right now. So here's the cool part. I can just make a new artboard now here and let's name this lines. Um, and I can combine this original artboard here and just nest it together. So I can add one and look at that. I can pop in the wave animation right here. Boom, how cool is that? There we go, quick and efficient. You know what else is efficient? Today's sponsor, Brilliant. You know, ever since I started my web development journey, I've regained a bit of excitement to pick up math again and physics and a bit of biology. But the problem is that most resources out there on the internet are either like long, boring videos or it's just not structured in a way that makes it fun. And this is where Brilliant comes in. They offer tons of courses on data analysis, probability, statistics, computer science, and more. And honestly, memorizing lessons has never been effective for me, but Brilliant does all the lessons interactively so you don't have to worry about that. And instead of memorizing something like we did in school, how did that work out by the way? Not too well. Brilliant takes you step by step through each problem helping you train your critical thinking and creative problem solving skills. And my favorite part is that all the lessons are bite-sized. And this is perfect because lots of times I only have maybe 10 or 15 minutes to spare and I can finish up two lessons and pick up something brand new. So thank you so much Brilliant for sponsoring this episode. Check out the link in the description down below for a free 30 day trial plus 20% off your premium subscription. Thank you. Now one thing I wanna do is just remove the background. So let's head over to the first one here and remove this fill. And let's go to the second one as well. I'll delete the fill. And now if we go here to the animation tab, we can get rid of that and add both of our idle with remap and the wave with remap. There we go. So it shows up now here, but we have control on how we're gonna do this. So to recreate one of the animations, we can head, let's try the idle one, for example. You're gonna need to add a time keyframe here at zero, and let's move this across to one second. And then let's increase the time to 100%. And as you can see, nothing happens now, uh, because when you have two animations on a timeline here, you need to, like, it's not gonna work if both have 100% mix, which I think is gonna try to, like, interpolate the animations uh, between the two, so you can, like, adjust the strength of them. So make sure you, like, if I'm doing the idle animation, make sure you go to wave and actually decrease that back to zero and then it should play fine. So there we go for the idle animation. I just added a bunch of different waves here and I just messed around with it. Have fun with it because you can come up with like completely different effects if you move these around, these points around. So for example, like look how, look how that looks, right? And now check this out. I'll take all of these and spread them across if I hold alt down. Look at that now. See, like completely different. There we go, so that's our idle animation, so we can name it idle here. And let's make a new one, which is gonna be our wave. Again, let's go here and change it to five seconds like we had on our first artboard. Maximize this. And now what I'm gonna do is for each wave, we need to take the idle animation here and turn it down to zero, right? So we need to do the opposite. Mix is gonna be 100, add a time keyframe. Let's move this across maybe like four seconds go to the wave and increase it to 100%. There we go. And there we go. I kind of added the keyframes in the line like that, at a diagonal for the beginning and the end frames as well. And that's what we have. And here is our final artboard as well. So we can name it final. And here, so this is the one that is actually going to show up in our React project. So we're going to clip the artboard in case it leaves, right? We don't want that to overflow. And we are going to change the fill to either something dark like that, or you can also get rid of it and add your fill later on on the website. Now for the nested artboard here, now we are gonna drag in this new one that we made, which is lines. So there we go, we can pop it on at the top. And again, you can add here to the animation and we'll add both of them back in again. So we need to do this whole animation fiasco again because 
<laughs> essentially we need to hook everything up to the state machine which is gonna control like hey when we hover over trigger that specific animation when you don't hover over go back to idle etc etc and here what i did was i added a hover object which is just an empty eclipse here that's hidden and then on inputs here you can create a boolean input i called it hover and then two listeners. So on the hover object, you can add a new listener. And here I can select maybe pointer enter or pointer exit, in our case, pointer enter. And I can change the hovered state over to true. And on these nodes here, we can set up conditions. If hovered is true, then head over to the animate. And if hovered is false, then head back to the idle. So then when we play this, it's gonna queue in the idle state and it's gonna stick there until we hover over it and then it's gonna create the animation. And then in your next JS or React project, you can import this package called Rive app at React Canvas. And here we're gonna use the use Rive. We actually don't even need this use state machine at all. So let's import this hook here like that and we can initialize it. I dropped my assets inside the public directory here. So the source, I'm just linking to it. The state machine name here has to match the name that you've given here. So I named it state. And then finally, you just add it as a Rive component. And there we go. That's our final animation right there. Have a look, how cool is that? Boof. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode and I'll catch you in the next one. Drop a like, drop a sub, check out the courses down below and bye-bye.